What is going on everyone and welcome to r slash entitled parents now today's first story is an extremely funny one in which an entire family each separately try to go and buy some alcohol from a store and they all get turned down like literally every single one of them ranging from you know under 20 years old to 60 plus it's a pretty insane story let's jump straight into it i can still see who's in the car I work in a small liquor shop and this happened last week a couple of days before christmas an entitled son entered with his girlfriend and spent a few minutes browsing our wines and spirits they then went into our cool room where we have our premixes jim beam and cola for example and our cartons of beer all up after about 10 minutes of browsing they decided to get a four pack of vodka cruises a six pack of jim beam and cola a bottle of southern comfort and a bottle of vodka all up it came to close to 130 dollars i scanned the products and then asked for the id of the boy we have to ask for id from anyone 25 or younger but the legal age is 18. the guy fumbles around in his wallet then says he cannot find it and asks if i will accept a photo of it on his phone i say no i have to see the actual id his girlfriend then goes into her purse and pulls out her id and shows me she's 19 years old I say thank you, but I still can't sell you anything as you are together and I need to see his ID The entitled son leaves the store and goes into a car parked right outside. We have clear windows I can see straight into the car He then comes back in with a piece of paper which turns out to be a high school year 12 report card from last year Why would you have that in your car? He asks whether this will do and I say no, it has to be photo ID Cue his entitled dad. His entitled dad enters the store, pulls out his wallet, and shows me his ID. I say, sorry, I can't sell to you as you are with your son. The dad starts going on about how he has worked in hotels for 20 years. He tried saying that you can sell to someone without ID if another person can vouch for the person, which is not true. He said he knows the liquor licensing laws like the back of his hand, but I still refuse to sell. His entitled son leaves the store and the entitled dad says, There, he is no longer here. You can sell to me now. I say that I still can't as I know that the two of them are together. The guy's girlfriend leaves the store at this point, leaving just the entitled dad in the store with me. The entitled dad offers to give me $20 as a bonus if I just do the transaction. I still say no. He then says that there is no reason that I can give him that says I cannot do the transaction. I start mentioning the relevant parts of the Liquor Licensing Act, and he says they are just guidelines, not law. So, I bring up on my laptop some court cases I know of where people have tried challenging the fines levied when you sell to underage people. He says that is only when you are caught by the police, and again offers to buy the alcohol, and I, again, refuse. The entitled dad then goes on a tirade about this being unfair and unjust, and I am preventing them from having a fun evening. I am being racist, that one blew me as I thought they were all Australian, and that he was going to lodge a complaint about unfair selling prices. Now, enter the entitled granddad. I already knew that the entitled granddad was in the car with the others, but he comes in acting as though he isn't part of the group. He starts walking around the store, acting as though he is browsing, and eventually comes to the register. I say to him that I cannot sell to him. The entitled granddad pulls out his ID and shows it to me. I tell him that it isn't a problem with his ID. The entitled granddad then asks me what the problem is. And I tell him that the problem is that your entitled grandson doesn't have an ID. The entitled granddad tries claiming that he doesn't know who that guy is. But I then say to him that I can see straight out the window into the car where everyone was. He then tries to tell me that I'm mistaken, but I offer to play back footage on the store's CCTV, showing everyone getting in and out of the same car. The entitled granddad starts saying that he is a former law enforcement, not a police officer. He knows what the laws are. He says that this is an abuse of their civil liberties. The entitled dad starts to come around to my side of the counter. I tell him to stop. The entitled dad says, just try to. At that moment, one of my regulars came in. We have a running joke between us about him being a detective due to some things he discovered on the internet for me that I couldn't find. So, as he came in, I said, hello, detective. The regular customer, now acting as a detective, said hello to me. The look on the entitled dad and the entitled granddad's faces when I said hello, detective, was priceless. I start talking to the regular customer about what this entitled dad and entitled granddad were doing in the store. 
but before I had even gotten through the first sentence, they had both hot-footed it out of the store and into the same very car. We turned and looked and watched them speed away. Honestly, guys, <laughs> it's starting to feel like partway through that story it became like a circus, you know. One member of the family goes in, another one goes out, they keep rotating. It's just like, uh, I don't know what's going on here. They're just subbing in for one another, each trying to do the exact same thing, knowing that it's not going to work. I don't even know why they're bothering. At that point, should you just go to another store? You would have saved so much time. Like, you've wasted everyone's time here. You could have been doing something way much more valuable with your time than just trying the same technique over and over again. Imagine the entire granddad coming in, though. Like, what? an image just acting like he wasn't involved with anyone else in his entire family who happened to be in the store oh you know what sorry you're not buying this uh, selection of alcohol anymore i'll get it how about that i'll get it and i'll get the exact same bottles that you were gonna get just by chance you know we're not together or anything don't worry about that even though we look the same this is my son and my grandson and my grandson's girlfriend don't worry about that i'll just get the same stuff oh thank you see you later like did you really think that was gonna work really don't get me wrong. It is annoying because I've had the exact same thing happen to me. When you go into a, a store and you want to buy alcohol, right? And, you know, just one person in your group doesn't have their ID and it can ruin it because obviously, you know, you have to check everyone's ID. That is policy in a lot of countries, definitely in the UK. And it sounds like in Australia as well. And it can be very annoying, but, you know, it is policy and it is actually legal. You have to check everyone's ID in a group if you think they're under the age of 25, not just 18, 25 as well. So, yeah. You know, it makes sense. And uh, don't take the bribe. If you do work in a store, please don't ever take the bribe because your whole store could be could be shut down if people find out about what you've done. Um, so OP, you obviously did the right thing there. But uh, yeah, I don't know why these customers didn't realize that it just wasn't going to work. Now moving on to our second story. Entitled parent barges into gas station, makes someone cry and calls us workers headless chickens. If today couldn't get any more worse, well, it sure did. I start my morning at a gas station at 6 a.m. My manager, who doesn't work weekends, changed the roster on Wednesday. So we had someone who wasn't meant to start till 1.30 turn up at 6. We sent him home. The guy who was meant to start at 7 didn't show up till 10.30. His previous roster had him at 12 p.m. start, not 7 a.m. And the guy who was meant to be there at 10 started at 9.30 to help us. When I got there this morning, there were three of us. The other two had started at 5 a.m. One of them had his birthday party yesterday and was high on drugs and came into work with zero sleep. When he went on his half around 8 a.m., he didn't even come back, leaving me and one other worker to cover the shop for an hour before someone else turned up. It was busy. Once we got our third person in, the other went on his half. Our manager stuffed up by changing rosters and not telling anyone. We did manage to survive till our manager came in along with two more staff though. So... This story happened just after 1.30 p.m. today. One of the guys who started at 5 a.m. had just clocked out as he was just finished for the day. I was in the break room coming back out after having a water and one of the new employees was calling me over to deal with a customer. Hello, what seems to be the problem? Of course, it was a Karen. Hello, I've been in and gotten this number to ring your manager and he isn't picking up. My daughter came in 30 minutes ago and got treated poorly. I want to speak to your manager in charge. I said I would try and find him, but it turned out he left ages ago. He came in at 11 and left at 12.30. I do apologize, but he isn't on site at the moment. Have you tried leaving a message? What? So you were telling me that there is no manager here? Are you all running around like headless chickens? I do ensure you that we are trained for what we have been doing, but anything in the office we have not. So what I'm hearing is that if there was a fire and the place burned down, well, who would you ring? When's your manager going to be in next? Well, we would ring the emergency line and then ring our manager on his personal phone. Our manager will be in on Monday and he doesn't work weekends. Okay, then give me his personal number. Well, I cannot do that due to privacy. Well, then where was the 5am guy who was manager today? One of the new employees mentioned the 5am guy who's our administrator. He is not a manager. The 5am guy has clocked off for the day and has gone home since he started at 5am. Also, he is not a manager. She then starts repeating the same story. What did this place burn down? Blah, blah, blah. At this point, a nice other customer gets involved. Hey, excuse me, Karen, but you can't come in here, push in front of the line and make a young girl cry. We were very busy and this nice customer had witnessed the whole thing. 
As soon as I heard make a young girl cry, there was only one other person working other than me who was a girl. So I knew who it was. At that moment then, I leave the Karen alone to deal with my crying co-worker as she is still trying to serve other people. The 5am guy was still in the office, but didn't want to come out because he knew the truth. The Karen's daughter did a drive off the other day and he had to do the manual fuel correction to get her to pay it. The 5am guy just said what he tells everyone with the drive off in our systems. I go back out to once again say that Karen has to call our manager and leave a message. I also pulled her up on the fact that she made one of our staff members cry and that this was the ending of her first week here. I just remember who served me. It was this man here. She says this pointing at a tall employee. But mom, he has only just started working for the day. Listen here, there is a photo at back with my daughter and my license plates. Then she tells me her number plates. I'm sorry, I cannot get that for you as it is private information on that paper and you are not the person in the photo. So due to regulations, I cannot give that to you. Well, go get it and put it right here. Then you're not handing it to me. You're just showing it. Once again, I cannot do that. It's a breach of policy. She got fed up with me following the rules and left yelling. Your manager is going to hear about this, she said. I was glad once she left. 30 minutes of saying the exact same thing is annoying. The 5am guy was still in the office. We had a talk about what happened and both of us couldn't do anything related to the store. Only our manager can. Yeah, I imagine that would be a very tough situation when you literally, you physically can't do anything else more than you were already doing. And you've got this like horrible customer who is just, you know, breathing fire at you, just being absolutely toxic and not listening to a word you're saying really. When you're literally telling them, genuinely, there's nothing more I can do here. I'm very sorry, but I don't have the power, you know, the influence. I'm not allowed to do more than just say, please call the manager, our manager, leave a message. And then he, she will, will sort it when they can. They're not working right now. And I literally can't even do the things you're asking me to do because it's not my job to i'm literally not allowed i don't know what more you can do in this situation and that honestly must be one of the worst things about working in any sort of like customer service job or a store when someone like this you have to deal with a horrible karen like this and they're genuinely not even listening to a word you're saying just making your life horrible Guys, if you have any like little stories about your, you working in customer service or, or you know a shop like this, dealing with customers like this, drop them down below because I bet it's happened to loads of you watching right now and I want to hear your stories from hell to be honest. Now moving on to our final story. Karen doesn't wait in lines. Or does she? I am so excited to have finally had a live Karen encounter. You know one where you're not thinking later of things you should have said. I'm making lasagna tonight. I needed a few ingredients, so off to the grocery store I went. I really wasn't in the mood to go out, so I was trying to get in and out of there quickly, since I only needed a few items. Throughout my shopping, I noticed a woman with her young boy who was probably about six or seven years old. I passed them a couple of times and could hear her nagging him or yelling at him. She was bumping into other shoppers without excusing herself and would huff as if the fact that she can't walk and push a cart at the same time was everyone else's fault. I got my items and headed to the checkout. There were only two lines open, but it wasn't crowded. I had only one guy in front of me and he was about halfway finished. Now, due to COVID, the store has a policy that you can't put your groceries on the belt until the belt is empty. As I was starting to put my things on the belt, I heard her coming and thought, "Uh uh-oh, please don't get in this line. I was starting to put my things on the belt and the entitled mum comes up very close, not social distancing with an overflowing car and her kid, who was playing a handheld game, completely behaving. She says, Um, I need to go first. I'm in a hurry and my son is tired and needs to go home. I'm sorry, but I'll be done in a few minutes. But I have a kid. Plus, we don't do lines. Well, congrats on the kid. He seems fine to me. No, no, you need to get behind me. I have a kid and he's cranky. Looks to me like mama is the one who's cranky. You're gonna need to wait your turn. Now this calls the cashier and two other nice guys in the line to start giggling. Try not to say anything. But my baby, he's ready to go and I'm going first. The cashier then said, mom, please be patient and you'll have your turn. She was first. I didn't ask for your opinion. Then one of the nice guys came in. Well, that's no way to talk to the cashier, Karen. Wait, what did you call me? That's racist. You can't call me that. 
Oh, I didn't realize Karen was a race. Where did Karens come from? If I'd have known that, well, I may have let you in front of me, as you are clearly superior to those of us who don't bring kids to the store. The other nice guy said, Mom, look, no one is being racist. Karen isn't a race. Yeah, but it's impolite. And you're not? Oh, that's right. Karens can say and do whatever they want without any consequences. I forgot. Well, you don't do lines. I don't tolerate people bullying me and being complete buttholes. What? You just curse in front of my son? You're in big trouble. You can't do that. Then the nice guy says, Are you going to get the manager? Oh no, we better all run. By this time, everyone within earshot is laughing at her. And she's starting to realize. We all know what happens when a Karen becomes self-aware. She starts screaming and stomping her feet. The cashier says, Mom, please, you are disturbing the customers and causing a scene. You can start loading your groceries now, but if you continue with this, you are going to be asked to leave. But they're teasing me, and all I did was ask to go ahead of her because of my kid, who, by the way, is still being quiet. She verbally assaulted me, and he was racist by calling me Karen. What are you going to do about this? This is your last chance. One more disruption, and you're leaving. Yeah, Karen, stop disrupting, another nice guy said. Right as he said that, another cashier comes and opens the next register over and takes both the nice guys so Karen had to continue to wait her turn. She didn't end up speaking with the manager and didn't say anything when the other register was opened because I think she actually realized she wasn't going to win. I call that a victory. Yeah, no doubt, OP, that is a fat dub for you. Uh, you've done well there, I can't lie. You've put a Karen in her place. And yeah, like you said at the start of this story, when you said, um, you know, it's good to have a Karen encounter and not be left wondering later in the day, oh, you know, this is what I should have said. I should have done this differently. You know, when you have an argument or a discussion with someone and you think about it for hours afterwards, you're like, oh, I really wish I'd said this or this. It would have been way better. Well, luckily for you, you've done, you've done well in the actual moment there. So no need to think about that, as you've said at the start of the story. All three of you, I mean, all four of you, the, both the nice guys, the cashier, and you have put this Karen right in her place because clearly her excuses about her kid being cranky, tired, whatever, were just a lie. They were behaving perfectly fine. It was all on this Karen. She was the one that was causing such a ruckus, being such an idiot. And yeah, you all told her what's up and she had to deal with the consequences. Amazing stuff. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this Entitled Parents. Before you go anywhere, before you click off the video, if you want more from me right away, check out this playlist of all my Entitled Parents. Yeah, if you know you're feeling a bit bored, maybe you're in lockdown like me, and you want something to do, then yeah, binge on this. It will uh, it will keep you entertained for many, many hours. I think there are, how many videos in that? Over 500, I want to say. Maybe even close to 600 videos in that playlist. I'm not sure, but I mean, get through them, guys. You've got a lot to get through, that's for sure. If you are new around here, make sure you are subscribed. And yeah, finally, click this button for a surprise.